<laughs> yeah, we're a new market. Yeah. There's a whole lot of nothing up here. <laughs> there is stuff. <laughs> There's stuff, but I drove in and I just see like, empty fields. And I'm yeah. like, where? Oh yeah, because you would come. Is this to Kansas? Like, where are yeah, we? You Welcome to the latest episode of Over a Pint. Uh, this week we're in my house again, uh, back in town. This week I'm excited to have an old friend from even before the Just Sell Homes days, the geeky agent himself, Tony Iacoviello. So for What's those up? who don't know you, maybe quick intro. I am Tony Iacoviello. Nobody can say my last name, <laughs> so I am the geeky agent. Uh, started off as Tony's Homes, actually, and other things, but I knew from the beginning nobody would be able to say <laughs> Yakov Yellow like nobody can say Foliato. Yeah. So the geeky agent it is uh, from Hamilton, about an hour and a half from here, I think, on a yeah. good day. Halfway between Toronto and Niagara Falls, so we're in there. Uh, old Steel Town, which is now turning into something else. We don't know what yet. It's like healthcare, technology, yeah. restaurant scene, service industry, bedroom community, you name it. Yeah. We're, we're everything at this point. It's like a similar twist that Pittsburgh did. It is very much like yeah. that, and uh, we've become a big movie town too. Yeah. So, like Pittsburgh, we actually stood in for Pittsburgh and Cinderella yeah. Man. <laughs> like they actually filmed our steel mills for that. Uh, Samuel Jackson's been in town a couple of times to do movies, yeah. um, and recently, being the geeks that we are, if you watch like Netflix and that, uh, The Umbrella Academy is a big show on Netflix, Netflix right on now. My list. <laughs> yeah, it's like seventy percent filmed in Hamilton. Yeah. Um, the Places that you'll see there are like basically a block away from where I grew up. Um, there's Red Church Cafe, which is like the, the site when they figure out that the apocalypse just happened. Yeah. It's like next door to the courthouse my mom works at. <laughs> so oh, it's right it's right downtown. And there's a yeah. bank at the beginning that they uh, stop a robbery at. That's where we have our Christmas party every year for the last seven <laughs> yeah. years. So that's, that's Hamilton. There's all yeah. that sort of stuff happening, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I've been around, yeah, just doing stuff. <laughs> so you brought a bunch of beer. I did. Uh, a bunch of beer, I mean that. Like cooler and then a separate bag of what didn't fit in it. From Collective Arts Brewing, I'm drinking a IPA called Ransack the Universe. It's got some pretty nice artwork on it, if you can see that. Yeah, and this is a citrus blonde called Saint of Circumstance. And all the artwork is from Hamilton. You can open her up. Yeah. Uh, Collective Arts is on Burlington Street in Hamilton. And I, buy, I get them because the beer is good. But the cans are better. <laughs> yeah, I like the art on it. They have all this art. So they have art competitions. If you go to Collective Brewery and find them online, they have competitions all the time, and they usually pick a lot of local artists. So I've got, like, I think 18 different cans of beer, they're, and they're all different outside labels kind of thing. So they'll, have lo they'll feature local artists on their beer cans, and it changes yeah. all the time. We're not going to do a ton of super close-ups of that because Facebook will ban it if it looks like a beer ad. And when you do the slow pouring and all that stuff, it looks like a beer ad and you can't do it. <laughs> no. It's all good. But, but check good. out Collective Arts. They're cool. They've yeah. been around for a while. I think we have actually had them on episodes before. Yeah, you can get them. They're all over. You can get Cheers. them in the beer store. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making the drive. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that works. So how long have you been in the industry now? Oh, um, I'll be finishing up eight years in October, um, all with Remax Escarpment ever since I started. Um, it's been interesting. <laughs> it's been an interesting eight years. So it's, uh, I started uh, 2011, October 2011 is kind of, yeah, that's when I started. And uh, it was a decent mar market, but not crazy. Yeah. And then little by little every year just got nuts and not more and more nuts up until the peak in 2017. Yeah. And then it's kind of chilled out a bit since then. And now it's swinging back up around again kind of thing. So it's been so fun. You've been the same brokers the whole time. Mm -hmm. What made you pick like Remax and then Remax Escarpment specifically? Uh, oh, well, Conrad probably, the, the broker, Conrad Zerini. Like I interviewed with just about everybody yeah. um, when I had sold houses in the past. Uh, just, co I guess, coincidentally, they'd always been with Remax. Mm -hmm. So, uh, houses that we bought to live in, houses that I flipped, because for a while we did some flips and rentals and that sort of thing. Uh, my good friend Heather Reed, now Dupino, uh, actually sold a house that I, I renovated downtown Hamilton and flipped when she was working with the golfy team. This is yeah. oh, over 10 years ago, <laughs> almost 10 years ago now. 
Um, she was with Remax, so I actually called her up because I was interviewing with everybody. Uh, I interviewed with all the big brokerages, a couple of boutique brokerages mm -hmm. in Hamilton. And then I called Heather up and I was just chatting with her and I was just like, so why should I go to Remax? Because everybody's telling me that they're super expensive, they got lots of fees and this and that and the other thing. Every reason not to go there. Um, and I just started chatting with her for a while and she pretty much convinced me on paper anyways yeah. um, that they had the, the support systems in place, had the, the presence that you know when you're out there you just you just mention that you're with Remax, people know what yeah. you do, right? So you don't really have to explain that anybody and since then I've actually had people um, that have come over to the brokerage that I've met like I had a friend uh, from Chase Realty that came over for a while and he was running into that same issue where he'd go to parties with friends of his yeah. and be chatting and be like hey what are you up to these days kind of thing and like well I'm with Chase Realty and blah 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 and like so what is that is that a bank <laughs> like literally he's telling me this I'm like all right so he'd have to kind of explain it to them and be like no we, we help people you know do real estate we help people buy and sell homes and they're like, well, like Remax? And you're like, yeah, like Remax. <laughs> and he's like, okay. So he ended up going over there. Uh, but then I, I interviewed with a bunch and they were, I'm relatively progressive when it comes to technology and all yeah. that, uh, even before real estate. And I interviewed with a couple brokers who've been around for a long time. And Conrad has too. He's been, I think himself personally in the business about 25, 30 years. And his family, like his parents started the brokerage on Remax Delmar one of the original Remax brokerages in Canada. Um, and so, but the other ones that I interviewed with were like, you know, the real estate industry really hasn't changed in the last 40 years. I was like, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe a little bit. And, uh, and one of them actually even said, you know, I, they we're at the time, this is now, you know, almost eight years ago, uh, saying, oh yeah, you know, we've, we've moved our stuff into the cloud and, <laughs> and we have, you know, this and that, but you know, I have never seen a client come out of that computer screen <laughs> ever. And as I'm sitting there listening to her talking to me, I'm like, well, then you ain't doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's was like back then. I was like, you've never had a client visit a website and send you an email saying, yeah. hey, I want you to help me buy or sell a house kind of thing. And they're like, well, yeah. I was like, well, they came out of your computer screen then, I guess. Um, but then I sat down and chatted with Conrad. And even back then, um, he was pretty progressive and he had ideas about like things like Twitter and stuff like that were just really getting started, yeah. right? Um, but he had already had a strategy in place where it was like the website was gonna be the hub and you're gonna use these social channels to like funnel traffic to the hub. Yeah. Um, so he already had that overall vision and we're actually sketching it out at, at the table while we're talking. It's mm -hmm. like, this is how it's gonna work. And so yeah, this is what I think. Cause I come from a marketing background at least the last few years when I worked yeah. corporately. And I said, yeah, this is, this is what I'm thinking. And it all seemed to kind of line up and they just had a more, it's a family run business, but it does have a pretty good corporate like structure, very business like yeah. structure. All the support systems are there. They take it seriously like a business, like they're looking to expand and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I thought, yeah, that's, that's where I need to be. Right. I just need that because I'm starting from nothing. Right. And I'm just like, I need somebody to tell me <laughs> from going from an office where it's like, you just show up and you sit at your desk and you got stuff coming in and you just do it to like, just be like, show up and you don't know what to do. It's like, I sort of needed somebody to be like, okay, here's how the day yeah. starts, right? Here's what you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that stuff. And you know, I know back then, I mean, this is a bit self-serving, but I know Connor was telling me, yeah, you know, you've got your monthly uh, desk fee and this and that, but that's sort of like our secret weapon. Cause then you're, you're in the hole and you know you have to work hard to make money, <laughs> right? You're not working for free. So you actually have to get up and work yeah. to make money to pay. And I was like, that's a really roundabout way of convincing me to pay you, but okay, sure. Yeah. This is why we're expensive to motivate you. Yeah, just to, to let you to get you exceed in sales, yeah. we're going to charge you a lot of money, and it's actually not a yeah. lot because um, I sat down with some friends from other like national brokerages that work there and stuff, and they were giving me the same story that you know it's more expensive to work there and all this kind of stuff. And the, until you sat down and broke down the numbers, and it's like you look at your splits and you look yeah. at your office fees and all that. And the two of us were sort of on the same level transaction wise. And I said, if I was working, like working where you are versus working where I am, I would come out 5,000 bucks ahead at the end of the year on my bottom line. And like I said, there was all these other support systems in place that literally well, no other brokerage I know of has, you know, especially not in our area. Um, so yeah, it just seemed like the right thing to do. And I've, I've been happy ever since. 
Um, and I get recruited, like everybody. You get the, the constant <laughs> emails. Oh, I yeah. still get recruited, and I'm not even selling. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. They I just get... see the name of the company and assume that I'm recruitable because I must be oh, absolutely. doing that. <laughs> yeah, I get like all the Toronto brokerages, all the little startups. Mm-hmm. Get all, you get on the mailing list, and then just they just start sending you training notifications and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm good, man. I'm yeah. good. I even had one where I just finished. It was actually pr- kind of smart. Um, I finished a transaction. Their agent... Uh, helped somebody purchase a home I had listed. So then we firmed up that deal. But a week later, he called me back just as a follow-up to say, hey, it was great working with you and all this kind of stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And then he's like, would you mind if my uh, my team leader follows up with you? Because, you know, he likes to make sure everything goes well. I'm like, and I know I know the team leader too, and I was just like, you can call me and try to pitch me if you want, <laughs> you know, because I'm pretty happy though. And when he actually called me, it was funny. I was at R4, yeah. the national convention in Vegas, like in the middle of a big like keynote speech, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm not gonna answer that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I know when I sold, what our broker did. So we got bought out by Hallmark at the time, yeah. and we brought in Bart Brindle, who was recruiting. What she implemented was every time we did a deal you had to rate the agent on the other side. And it's like anyone who got a nine or 10 out of 10, she picked up the phone and tried to recruit. Yeah. And I was like, smart, because you're, then you're kind of bringing in the quality agents. Yeah. And it's you're getting like the opinions from people on the ground of yeah. what were they actually like. And a lot of the recruiting, I think, at Escarpment happens with agents talking to other agents. Um, I've brought people in uh, all the time, if you've been out of town ones. So if you're uh, like Jennifer Patterson's come in to visit a couple of times and that. Yeah. Um, and if they're in the office, I'll bring them in to see Conrad and be like, hey, she's pretty cool. <laughs> Just, you know, talk to her um, and we'll chat them up. And the thing is, they've created an environment there, for me anyways. I mean, I'm sure there's there's people that have come and gone in, yeah. that, in that time. So does a broker just right for everyone? Yeah, it doesn't, not, not, not a right fit. Sometimes it's a little bit, so it's a weird situation because it's a very pro, uh, active brokerage. Um, like we're, the numbers just came out, like we're, as far as transactions go in every district that we're working in, we're the top brokerage, Mm -hmm. right? We've got a lot of agents too. I think from, we just got a couple of offices out in Niagara way. They've merged with us. So we've got basically from Hamilton, Burlington to Niagara, right? So there's 11 or 13 offices. I forget now, like 600 agents spread out over that area. Um, So if you're happy to work there, you're really happy. And I think that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to make their agents, their fans, yeah. The way that you know we kind of do for our, our clients, we want to make them raving fans, yeah. and like they do a lot for us. Like they do, there's a ton of training that's free. There's these massive like holiday parties every year. There's a big awards break, uh, banquet. Um, there's all these things happening all the time. Conrad just sent me like a bomb bomb uh, yeah. email about just a, a transaction that closed, and it was kind of awkward. Just so you know, if Conrad, if you like, because <laughs> Conrad, I love him to death, but he's very geeky and nerdy sometimes. Yeah. And he'll, he'll try that doesn't to doesn't appeal to you. It does. Not in a geeky like that way. He, I was just gonna say he tried. He tried to. Uh, what do you? What do you try to say? He goes, and then in the middle of a meeting, he put up a Spock salute. He put up a live long and prosper, and he said to use the force. <laughs> and it's just like completely wrong. Swing and a miss. Oh yeah, it's like those memes you get with like yeah. Picard, but then it's got like a Harry Potter quote and then a Gandalf yeah. whatever kind of all mixed in together. It's like, dude, yeah. it was right to me. I was like, you just it just ruined my yeah. image of you. Um, but he's, yeah, so, but he's, he calls every agent on their birthday and like, he's yeah. very involved. You can, I call him, literally I'll call him in within 10 minutes. He's on the phone yeah. and he'll get whatever I need. Like he's there and him and his sisters and the whole family's doing that. It's just, it's been their business forever. Right. Yeah. Um, so the brokerage is in general, yeah. I think, cause now we're getting into talking about like, um, appreciation marketing and stuff yeah. like that. So I've been to a few things like that and I think he's kind of been doing it without really calling it that necessarily, right? So I think a lot of what we're learning there translates over into like how I approach my clients. Yeah. So I kind of just take what he's doing and just sort of adapt it in, in a much smaller way because my budget is a lot smaller <laughs> than his. Um, I actually contribute to his budget a lot, so there you go. Um, but yeah, just you know the, the touches all the time kind of thing like that. Like he's always in contact with the agents he's always in the offices going from one office to the other um like i said it it permeates his life too i think because you know he drives a tesla he's got like 
he's installed like a green spaces in the offices and like charging stations in the offices. He's just a forward thinking type person. So it just kind of yeah. filters down into everything else that he does. Right. So it's pretty cool. I know you do a lot on like the agent to agent side of things. Like, do you ever think you'll transition from sales to like something in the management side of the business? Or do you think sales is where you want to be? Um, I think it depends. I think I've, I've had experience with both. Mm -hmm. Um, I did manage people once upon a time. Um, yeah, I know. I've thought about it both ways. I wouldn't mind doing it for a while. I like training. I like coaching. I like teaching. Yeah. Um, I did a science degree. So back in university, I did a, a science degree and some master's level work. So I taught lab sessions. Like I had, I had graded papers and I taught lessons and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, and most people seem to to like the way that I explain things. I don't know why. I'm pretty. I'm pretty laid back. I think I make it understandable or relatable for yeah. most people. Um, so I've had people tell me like within our brokerage after we've been to a training session that was particularly bad to say like, you know, you should, you should have done this kind of thing because yeah. we've, we've already talked about this kind of stuff and I'm actually going to another team's office tomorrow, uh, to teach them how to do Facebook ads yeah. basically for free. I just, I happen to be friends of mine. So I'm going to stop in and just show them how to do some basic stuff. Um, and I did some with Amy Gilmore's group mm -hmm. for a while. We went out there. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she, she, she had, we were just chatting at a conference one day. And she's like, would you mind coming into my office and kind of just showing people how to do stuff? And I was like, you're not in my trading area. Sure. <laughs> I'll come down and teach you how to do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I enjoy that part of it. Mm -hmm. I do. So if that opportunity came up, I'd really have to consider it. I think I'd like to eventually... Um, like I've had other things to deal with up until now. I've been through like a divorce and getting kids and yeah. settled and a lot. So things are starting to move in a direction where I think I'll establish some sort of a team yeah. environment at some point and slowly grow that. And I think managing that will kind of be my role, yeah. like like training them and then managing that sort of part of it, kind of like what Conrad's doing for me now as an individual agent. Um, I think that's more the path that I'll go. And I'll probably make more money doing that than I would being an office manager. Um, so I think that's the thing. Because ultimately, um, yeah, corporate life after a while just got really boring for me. Yeah. Right? It just, I know that feeling. <laughs> uh, it was just a slog. Yeah. And it was just like, it was one of those things. I was commuting to Mississauga every day from, from Hamilton. Uh, from here. Yeah. There Which you is go. Aurora area. <laughs> yeah, we're in New Market. Yeah. There's a whole lot of nothing up here. <laughs> there is stuff. <laughs> There's stuff, but I drove in and I just see like empty fields. I'm yeah. like, where? Oh am yeah, because you would come. Is this Kansas? Like, where are yeah, we? Yeah, you come in through the part that has nothing coming up. Yeah, part, basically. Come, you came in from the 404. Well, there you there's go. A whole sure. section. Goes in that other side of town. Yeah, yeah. The other side of the tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but yeah, it's just you know, corporate life killed me after a while because I ended up. I don't have a marketing background as far as like formal education. Neither do I. Um, <laughs> no, and I, most people I know don't who are in marketing, no. um, but they're creative people, right? And they just kind of gravitated towards it over time. And so I worked at a lab supply company mm -hmm. and basically started in customer service, like right out of school, pretty much. Or I managed an electronics boutique store, an EV game store for about a year. No. Um, then I ended up in Mississauga doing this and it's commuting. I did that for like two years. And then immediately I was in like quotes department doing business, but I was doing like business proposals for national accounts. So I was putting together packages with like everything from the graphics to the pricing and stuff. Yeah. So it was all the creative and all the analytical stuff, right? Yeah. And that I really like doing, but in a corporate setting, it's like you need to get like 10 people's approval before you yeah. anybody sees it, right? And then when I moved to marketing, it was the same. I come up with all these great ideas mm -hmm. and they'd love the ideas, but then once it got past three people, it was like, you know, it was nothing. It was just, yeah. you know, you just couldn't do it. Um, so what I'm doing now, there's just a whole heck of a lot more freedom to do whatever you want. Like this whole geeky yeah. agent thing with the comic comic books and geekiness and whatever. To this day, I still get agents telling me all the time. They're just like, oh, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, you, I love that doesn't, it doesn't look professional. There's going to be some people that are just put off by it and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm good with yeah. that, right? But in the, in the corporate level, you can't do that. Right? Yeah, that, that's like one thing I noticed. Like even when I work corporately, even though like, so I was at the Remax head office there, it wasn't even like, I love the people there. It was, but like, you get an idea, you pitch it, 
and then your boss has to pitch it to their boss, you guys pitch it to their boss, and then there's changes at each level, then changes on the way back down, and then it's like a month later and it's a completely different idea, and you're like, yeah. not what I was thinking, whereas like yeah. now I get an idea, I'm like, I'm like over a pint, it was, I had the idea, I figured out the name, and by the end of the next week I was filming the first episode. Mm-hmm. Like that would not happen. <laughs> yeah, in most other situations. No, same with me. If I if I think about doing something, literally, like with the technology, and most people that are probably watching this already know, is like you know, I just flick my phone on, mm-hmm. and I'll start doing a Facebook live video. And if I no. feel like talking about uh, like new mortgage rules no. and stuff, like we'll talk about that, and I'll, that'll end up on the YouTube channel right next to the the pop culture update. Yeah. No. Right, so I'll be sitting there talking about Netflix and whatever's coming like, from DC this month or whatever, yeah. and uh, they'll all end up on the YouTube channel and they all attract different people, right? And but there's, I don't know, there's an overlap now. I think we're seeing like with this whole rise of influencers and that sort of thing, is that I'm seeing more people who are doing less talking about business and just talking about themselves, yeah. and like the attraction to them is is that, yeah. right? So they're looking at guys who are, uh, they like watching them on Instagram because like they're, the way they dress or they're always hanging out in restaurants or whatever, and they happen to be real estate agents. So like, oh, that guy's really cool. I like that guy, which is the no and like part, right? And then they want to do your trust part. So they'll call you up and be like, all right, I'm thinking about buying a house or selling a house, whatever. Let's, Let's chat and see. And then you build that trust part and say, well, yeah. I'm a real estate agent. I've been in the business this long. This is how many transactions I do. This is where I work, and this is the type of places that I that I buy and sell, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a whole other avenue towards the more traditional stuff shirt kind of way yeah. of doing, very formal way of doing stuff. And I worked in science. I worked in lab supply. Yeah. So I mean, if we're dealing with like everything from like test tubes to like mass spectrometers and all this other kind of junk, and uh, dealing with scientists. Right, so the corporate idea was that you had to be real buttoned up and real professional, otherwise they yeah. wouldn't bother with you. But once you go hang out with them, you figure out, no, they're pretty cool too. Yeah. And they're scientists, so they all watch Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> the right group. Yeah. So like on that though, like when we're talking about like you're branded now as like the geeky agent, like you're pretty well known for being a giant geek. Yeah. Is but you started like your Tony's Homes very brief maybe not by choice tony cannoli and a few other things in there yeah like how has that changed and how much of like it is like an intentional part by you to push those things out um it's it's an organic change like i think the tony's homes part started as still having the mentality is like well i still got to be professional I still got to be, I'm going to be in real estate. I still want to come across as, I didn't want to come across as the the suit and tie wearing kind of guy, but obviously I didn't want to be like the completely relaxed, like don't care kind of guy. Right. And I still, when I started at least still had that in the back of my mind, you know, that realtor like, Hey, I had that realtor pose. Call me. Yeah. (laughs) You know what? And it's like, you get in and it's like, you're looking around and like not being being in marketing and be, I mean, I was in business. I had a life before real estate. Mm-hmm. I didn't get into real estate until I was like, how old am I now? <laughs> 38. Uh, so, I mean, I had a whole life with me you know, getting married and having kids and, mm-hmm. and working and everything else. Um, so I knew how to be in business, uh, but I didn't know how to be in real estate. So I had a perception of what real estate agents were like. Yeah. Um, you get in and you look around and you see, okay, what are all the people who are actually making money doing? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. And they most, for the most part, had the hey, <laughs> this, the stiff poses and all, and the phone photos and all that junk. It's like, well, I guess that's what I got to do too, right? <laughs> so you go and get your headshot, and I still, I've never taken another headshot no. ever since. Like, I just don't use it anymore. I think it's on my my uh, corporate profile or something like that, and I just never have. I have random photos of other people, like Jennifer Evelyn, she's out there somewhere, have taken of me, and yeah. just like me hanging out somewhere, I'm like, hey, that's a good one. And <laughs> I just, just don't care. Um, but yeah, after a while, I was just like, man, I'm not really liking this. The Tony Holmes one wasn't bad. It was still kind of fun. Um, but then after a while, it was just kind of like, like, why am I doing this? It's just like, well, why don't I just do what I want to do? Right? And I was always loving, I loved Facebook from the beginning, right? Like long before real estate, yeah. I was out there putting out like partial song lyrics, challenging people to 
tell me the band and the name the song and all this kind of stuff and just random stuff or making comments like I was renovating houses I'd be in East Hamilton just making yeah. weird comments about the people at Tim Hortons at 2 a.m. and just you know having fun with it kind of thing I was like you know what I think I just need to do that and so I just did I just started doing that and I thought okay well how do I introduce this in so I became um, the real estate geek not too long after that it's like your friendly neighborhood real estate yeah, geek, sort that. of like spider-man-ish looking kind of thing which so is your favorite Comic. My favorite comic, of course, yeah. there's Spidey <laughs> in the black suit, and my, and my Spidey socks. <laughs> Anybody wants them? Um, yeah. So then you know, and then you start meeting other people. So it wasn't too long afterwards. Um, I think we had met. I'm trying to think how this all kind of we must happened. have met at Integra. Like I don't think we through met Integra for before. sure. No, like I knew Bruce before Bruce Johnson. Yeah. Um, I knew a few people before, but I didn't know too many. No, I knew you as a trainer from Integra. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Donna, our friend Donna McCauley, who's, yeah. uh, Susan and Moe's daughter out in Ottawa. If you know Susan yeah. Moe, Prashrez out there. Um, she knew Katie Miller in Guelph. Uh, and I kind of had met Tony Joe from Victoria, BC yeah. sideways. Um, just briefly met him somewhere. Um, and I forget who else. There's a couple other people that I knew from my office that were all geeky real estate agents like yeah. we would have these conversations and there'd be like uh talking about comic books or superhero movies or whatever was happening at the time um and i think it was donna that really triggered it to me because i saw her talking at a conference she got pulled up on stage that uh, was my first day at integra there you go she yeah. got she got pulled up on stage to speak as a millennial yeah. All about how she's using technology in real estate. It was about Evernote. <laughs> it was about Evernote? Yeah. Yes, I think it was. It was. I, it was my first day on the job when I switched to corporate life from sales. That was like the, the paperless agent or something yeah, like so that? Yeah, so they brought the paperless agent in and then, and not against paperless agent, this was more like, whatever the talk was right before then on Evernote just wasn't hitting home with the audience. Right. And so like, okay, we need someone selling to, to come up on stage and talk about it. Right. And so she put up her hand, and they just pulled her up and yeah. started talking about it. Yeah, she just started going on. And she, and she spoke really well, and she great. spoke intelligently. Uh, she comes from a tech background, mm -hmm. so I mean, she knew what she was talking about. <coughs> okay. And uh, don't tie on this. Went the wrong way. <laughs> uh, as most things from Hamilton do. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, yeah, so she spoke well. So like most people in the audience, I'm flipping through Facebook to say, who is this person? Yeah. And I pulled her up, and I'm just like trolling her page, like scrolling through her page, see who she is. And at some point in there, uh, there was a cosplay photo. Yeah. So she went to a convention, if you don't know what cosplay is, costume play. Uh, went to some comic book convention out in Ottawa with some friends and dressed up as one of the characters. Who, I can't even remember what it was now, if it was from The Witcher or something like that. Yeah. Um, and so I made a comment on her, on her pro, because a whole bunch of people were like, hey, good job on today, on your, yeah. your speech and all this kind of stuff. So I threw a comment in there, I was like, hey, Cosplay girl does good. Good for you. And then and she responded. She's like, oh, my God. She's like, you're like one of two people in real estate that knows what cosplay is. I was like, no, I think there's I think there's a few more of us. Yeah. So not too long after that, to make a long story somewhat shorter, um, I started the Facebook group, the League of Real Estate Geeks, uh, Realtor Geeks initially, and then yeah, figured that's... Swapped out. Can't trade, yeah, I can't <laughs> trademark that. So I'll take that out, Real Estate Geeks, yeah. so LORG, as we call it. Uh, so it was you and myself and Donna and Tony Joe, uh, Chris Hayward and a few other ones. I think there were six or seven at the beginning and it was, and Katie Miller cause Donna yeah. had mentioned her and, uh, it was just a Facebook group and it was like real estate agents who were into pop culture, mostly like comic books, superhero, sci-fi, mm -hmm. video games, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Traditional geeky. Yeah. Stuff. Like Star Wars type stuff and everything. Yeah. And, uh, but who were real estate agents and to a person they all had these very professional, <laughs> stiff... Tony Joe is like the borderline one because he's yeah. out in Seattle doing uh, Red Dwarf marathons yeah. on, the, on, the marathon, <laughs> on the out there. Yeah. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But otherwise, they were all pretty pretty buttoned up and everything like that. And I was like, nah, there's got to be a better way. So at least we created this sort of safe space, this little yeah. group that we could, we could just geek out on and yeah. do whatever. And uh, so I invited all these people to join this group. And immediately, uh, I think it was Katie Miller had the best response. She's like, oh my God, I'm so glad this exists and that I'm a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the very first comment in the group. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I think we're onto something here. Yeah. And little by little, I think it just, uh, was like, you know what? Yeah, let's just do it. At this point, it's like, 
if you're talking to anybody who's probably 40 or younger, maybe even 50 or younger, you're, you don't really ask them if they're playing video games. You ask them which ones. Yeah. Like, so what, what system are you, <laughs> you playing with? What games are you playing? What are you watching? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. It's not even really a question, right? Even if you're just playing mobile games, right? Yeah. Like there's, everybody's doing something. It's just part of the yeah. culture. And if you're watching anything on TV and stuff, like whether it's Big Bang Theory on, on out, um, there's comic book references like everywhere. Yeah. Right. So it's just something that they've been around long enough and they're po popular enough that they're just part of the culture now. MCU um, had a big role in that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that was a big part of it, but it was already building before yeah. then. It's like, I was noticing back when Iron Man came out, so that's 11 years ago now. Um, so even before I started in real estate, then and before, like I noticed like going to the comic shops and stuff like that, the percentage of girls... Yeah. That would change drastically. Because when I was, you know, I'm 46 this year, so we're going back, like, literally almost 40 years when I started collecting comic books. Um, but going into comic book shops and stuff back then, you might have seen a girl get dragged in with a guy. Yeah. Like, it was her, her unwilling girlfriend that just like, ah, okay, let's go to the comic book shop kind of thing. And now it's like I see mothers bringing their daughters in. Yeah. To like, well, like our league of real estate is like half women, at maybe least not half, but pretty close. It, yeah, it fluctuates, but yeah, there's about 30 of us, and there's probably about 12 to 13 women, and they're hardcore geeks. They're yeah, like, like they're, they're worse than the like, most of the like, guys. Like, they're like, hardcore if you take cosplayers. like Steph Arnold, for example, like, yeah, I could not compete with her in a Star Wars conversation, I'd get no. slapped down pretty hard. <laughs> no, no, and I'm like that, like, I'm a massive yeah. geek, and people kind of know me that way, but like, I don't memorize stuff. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm one of these guys. I listen to Scott Lobdell. He's a comic book artist today. And there's a couple of comic book artists like Mark Wade and, and a couple other guys. Kurt Busiek is another one that have, like, photographic memories that could yeah. tell you, like, you know, in, in Action Comics number 32 from 1963, yeah. Superman had this for breakfast on page six kind of thing. Right? I was like, yeah, ah, no. No. No, I've, I've read them probably, and, I, and I've watched the movies, and I've done all that. You talk to me about it, I'll remember the reference at that point. Yeah, like I know the <laughs> stories and stuff, but if you bring up like Doctor Who stuff, if, we're, if I'm in a trivia competition, yeah. I'll do pretty well until I get up against like Brett. Like Brett Colfarp, another yeah. friend of ours who's like a massive Star Wars fan. Yeah, he's um, a nice level. Yeah, I, yeah, there's no way. Like I've seen the movies, and I've seen them multiple times, yeah. and that's about it. Like yeah. that's where my, my knowledge ends. Uh, and I enjoy them and I know the stories and I can talk about story arcs and all that kind of stuff, but the minutia of the characters and what happened in the yeah. novels and the TV sh I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just can't because I watch everything. And, uh, but anyways, we started that group and then once we started that group, um, I think within the group, it's sort of, it's interesting to watch everybody's sort of confidence build because you could see everybody in the group doing more geeky things publicly. Yeah. You know, in, implementing it in their business kind of thing. And then we're sharing ideas in the group saying, hey, I'm thinking of changing my business card and yeah. making it a bit more cartoony. What do you guys think? So I'll usually put it in the group first to see what everybody else yeah. thinks. And then I'll put it out to the wider Facebook group and then I'll just use it. Yeah. And then I got to the point now where it's just like, I just do it. Yeah. Right. So. So if you're super geeky <laughs> and you think you can qualify, you have to reach out to Tony because we actually have a qualification process. Yes. Which generally means you have to prove how geeky you are. There's a gauntlet. Plus, you can't be a dick. Yes. There's like two rules. One, you have to be super geeky, and two, you can't be a dick. Oh, and you have to be a real estate agent. That. Oh, well, I guess technically I am. Yeah, I well, think you were. Real estate industry. Yeah, it depends. But like committed to the industry, not yeah. I took a job because I'm in this. Yeah, you can't be the janitor happens. in a real estate office. Yeah. That doesn't work. No. Yeah, you have to be like, your real estate, like, As an example, like, hypothetically, if just the homes folded, I'm not leaving the industry. No. I'm staying in the industry. Yeah. That's a real estate But, it, you know, once you're in, you're kind of in. Like, Dawn, yeah. is, not, Dawn is not anymore. Like, she yeah, was a real estate right. agent when she joined. Yeah. Uh, and she's moved back into the tech sector. And I remember her sending me a message, like, do I, do I have to leave the group now? I was like, no. Once you're in, you're in. That's yeah, it. We got stuck. you. <laughs> so, as long as you're, like, like Andrew said, as long as you're, you're not a jerk, that's yeah. like, which is rule number one. Um, and we do like nerd fights and we do pylons and yeah. we just, but in a, in a friendly way. <laughs> and, 
then you, you, you can stay. <laughs> kind of. Which I was going to bring up with you, like Stephanie, the other day. So this is like inside the group stuff, though. Because we're having, you guys are having a little back and forth about uh, Wheel of Time. Yeah. And stuff. And no, because she was promoting the plagiarizer. Right. The other, whatever her book was that she read, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, we're not going to name it because he's a plagiarizing. I, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but you guys are having a back and forth. And I was just sitting there watching, waiting for the nerd fight to start. <laughs> and then you guys both calmed it down. And you're like, I'm like, dude, what happened? And like, oh, we're just adulting now. And then I find out that you hired her. I was like, oh, yeah, we, were, we were in negotiations privately at that. Time. I know. I was like, I see. There's other stuff happening. Yeah. I get it. No, no, you're not yeah. adults at all. So it was yeah. fun. Well, that's the other thing. It's like the people in the group. That's what I love. Is like, one, it's a small community of people. Which in real estate, like, you guys should start your own group around little things that you like because the connections mm. are great. But like, the people in that group, we've like all become friends outside of it. Like, meeting at conferences and doing stuff and like. And now we're like all over the industry in weird different roles all over the place. Yes, yeah, everybody's moved on. Like Brett, for example, yeah. um, I just saw him at R4, the, the, the conference yeah. in Vegas, but he's the industry outreach or director of industry outreach, whatever the title is this week, yeah. uh, for Zillow. And he, when he started, he was with Remax on the West Coast in BC. Yeah, just like a, a brokerage in Vancouver. Yeah, he was working out with Remax there, and then he went to Better Homes and Gardens as a director. And then he's had a couple different positions there, and then he's gone on to Zillow. Uh, Matthew, we'll have him on a future episode. Yeah, Brett's amazing. He's awesome. Yeah. And uh, as far as like both things, like Star Wars knowledge and real estate knowledge, I'll give, yeah. I'll give him props for that, even though he's at Zillow. I yeah. love you, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that was more for Brett than Zillow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Um, Yes, I mean, it, you know, he's he's dedicated to the industry as much. And that's a good thing about the group is that my thing with geeks, or the title geek anyways, is is just basically people that are really passionate about what what they like. And they're not afraid to be passionate about it, right? So, I mean, if you're a massive football fan, you're basically a football geek, yeah. right? That's There's what no you are. There's no difference from a massive football fan to a massive Star Wars fan. Really, no. at the end of the day. No, at the end of the day, like a massive, like to the point where, like, people in our group would be the equivalent of a football fan who has like paraphernalia, has like a jersey, yeah. um, has like the stuff in their house, like a football, a branded football or a football helmet, yeah. and some of the stuff like the uh, that yeah. goes with the team. And so, like, Star Wars fans have Star Wars stuff, <laughs> right? Like. <laughs> little pair of, like Christmas ornaments or yeah, like I've got yeah, I've got a Vader mask that you can talk into in a, yeah. and a Stormtrooper pillow like that mm -hmm. sits on my couch kind of thing. So they just have stuff that's related to it. And the thing is, it's the passion about it, right? So it's not just like, and I kind of described this to lots of people and recently about the difference between a nerd and a geek is what most people end up asking me because they don't, they are slightly different, right? Yeah. So all geeks are nerds, but not all nerds are geeks. And the difference mainly being it's like action and passion. So a nerd is somebody who is like really passionate about something, really loves something, and they'll spend a lot of time researching it and yeah. understanding it, be able to talk about it, maybe even teach about it kind of thing. Um, so you can be a computer nerd, a, a geography nerd, a comic book nerd. But a geek is somebody who kind of takes that and then does something with it, yeah. right? So either it's an outward expression of that, so they're, they're either just wearing like you know comic book t-shirts or whatever it is, um, doing at this point they're doing blogs and videos about it just commenting on movies or they're going to the extent of like becoming a cosplayer learning how to make costumes so that they could wear the costumes and go to the conventions and be with the, a like-minded group of people and just have fun doing stuff right and I know Brett's been to like you know, I keep talking about Brett but he keeps going to like the, the big Star Wars gatherings and the Disney yeah. gatherings. He's been to the Skywalker Ranch. Um, him and a bunch of buddies did excursions to the Star Wars film locations. Yeah. Uh, so, like, he's been to Marrakesh, where they filmed Star Wars and Indiana Jones. And he's got a whole, I think it's called I'm in the Movies. Yep. That's right. His Instagram, account. Instagram account, I'm in the Movies, where he's got himself at various movie and film locations, whether it's Halloween or yeah. Home Alone and all that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of going that next level. And then when it comes to real estate, like all the people in the group without exception are really dedicated to the industry. Like they're, they're over time, I, I'm seeing them take more and more advanced positions in the industry. They're becoming uh, like Sandra Kirkland, for example, over in Oakville. Um, you know, she was an agent when she joined up with us. Uh, she'd become like a broker or a, an office manager. And now she's a, 
I want to say an Omdreb director yeah. on, on the board. Um, so they're looking to take more advanced positions and be more involved in the industry because as passionate as they are about their geeky stuff, yeah. they're also very passionate about the professional stuff yeah. that they do, right? So, um, and Bruce Johnson's a great example of that. Like he's part of the group, yeah. Bruce and Mary Johnson, with their Motorcycle for Miracles run. Um, he's passionate about like geeky stuff like comic books and movies yeah. and that, but he's also passionate about hockey. So he yeah. plays for the Remax hockey team and he loves hockey. And he's passionate about Children's Miracle Network, like just giving back to the community and sick kids especially. So he's done these three amazing motorcycle rides. He's raised over $600,000 for Children's Miracle Network. Um, Matthew started off, he was at New York Times, now he's at Inman. Uh, Billy was at uh, C21, was at Inman yeah. for a bit, and now he's at... Leading RE. Leading Edge RE. Just released his episode last week. Well, as of this filming, by the time this airs, it'll be three or four weeks ago. Yes. But we just aired an episode of Billy. Check it out. Yeah, Billy's <laughs> awesome. I've interviewed yeah. Billy and Matthew. I've had you on before. Yeah. Um, so we've kind of traded off back and forth, and we're talking mainly real estate type stuff. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but probably 10% of Overpine episodes are with League of Real Estate Geek members. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to that point. And the yeah. thing is, they're all people who are, like you said, pretty established in the industry so having them on is the perfect yeah. uh perfect combination of things right because eventually like with billy i think we ended up talking about uh infinity war because that was the movie adventures infinity war is on its way so we talked about real estate the whole time and then the last 10 minutes we talked about thanos <laughs> and the infinite and infinity yeah. war and we had matthew shad bolt on so we talked about uh, marketing and design and relationships and real estate and then towards the end we ended up getting into I don't even know what we ended up getting into just all kinds of geeky stuff about Han Solo and and Star Wars and just all that sort I think of it's stuff. Like, that stuff too that really like cements relationships like, so like obviously a huge part of the industry is relationship building yeah and like I find that that cements a lot like I know with Billy we went out like I met him at Inman and like they're really the night that's like, cemented as like us like our friendship and like we help each other with business and talk is you know, for dinner, but then over the dinners we're talking business, I can't remember which one of us, one of us made a reference that was obscure and geeky as hell, but and I, one of us, whoever has made it, the other picked up on it right yeah, away. You find your tribe. Yeah, and we started <laughs> talking, but it was like, it was the geek side of things that cemented the friendship. Sure. Outside of the business side. So like, that's yeah. where I found it's interesting from like, even just professionally is like having those extra interests and displaying them, like solidifies a lot of business relationships too. Yeah. And I think it's gonna, that's kind of the way Facebook especially is going is that community building, yeah. right? It has, I mean, we've been beating that drum forever about building a community group for your, yeah. your farm area, like your local area that you work in. Um, community pages and groups and all that sort of stuff, becoming a community expert that way. Um, so that's one way to do it. But the other way is kind of like with Lorg and with what you're yeah. doing with the wheelhouse and stuff. And it's just like a gathering more of like-minded people. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of creating that group. And so for us, like for Lorg, it's more like, we. Just, I mean, we, there are some referrals and things that go back and forth. Not yeah. a ton, I don't think. Well, because we're all in such different areas yeah you know, it's not a huge referral network and it was never really meant to be yeah. it was just more like a fun kind of thing for us to do but industry wise like i said i know people who are like in various positions throughout the industry so i can get their feedback on stuff yeah. at least right um so at least i can understand how the industry works better yeah. um and then eventually yeah you've got those connections i mean if it helps you get a speaking gig somewhere or if you get asked to be on a panel somewhere because you know somebody who knows somebody and that kind of thing it's generally how business works right um and then yeah you, you just kind of i don't like to refer people and i do a lot of referral business to people that i don't know yeah. right and by no i mean like have an opportunity to sit like this and chat with them for a bit because uh, i'm not the kind of person that goes to like a big convention like the r4 convention and just hands out like 500 cards yeah. a day kind of thing. It's just, and I see people doing it. I see people walking down the hallways just giving business cards to everybody yeah, they pass by. Yeah, drop it at every table and yeah. walk away with a Yeah, and every, seat, and every seat at the, yeah. at the place kind of thing. And I'm just like, and you know what? It, it probably does work to a certain extent. Um, they probably get some sort of ROI on it kind yeah. of thing. Otherwise, at some point, you think they would stop. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, maybe yeah, not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, they were told, this is what you need to do when you go to a convention. Yeah. Bring 10,000 cards and hand them all out. Yeah. I think I, I bought 1,000 cards two years ago. 
Oh yeah. And I just reordered like a week ago, only yeah. because I hired Stephanie and I had to order her cards. I'm like, yeah. I might as well order mine. Yeah. But like, yeah, like a thousand cards has lasted me a couple of years. Yeah. And I go to conferences a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, me too. I've got like a huge pile. My son made me for. I forget if it was my birthday or Father's Day, one of those things, but he made me like a little plaque that it says Remax on. It's hand painted from yeah. like when I started, so like eight years ago when he was when he was about seven or eight. Yeah. And it just says Remax. It's got these three tiny little <laughs> hooks on it on the bottom, yeah. and I've piled like fifty lanyards on them by the yeah. front door. They're just from all the different conferences and stuff. And yeah, I go I go with more of the intention. I think it was Lee Brown who mentioned it either either in a, in a talk that she did or in a conversation that we had about like she goes to a conference to meet five people yeah right if i'm going to a three or four day conference i really just want to meet five people and make a connection with them that i'm actually going to talk to them after the fact well, i find that way more valuable than kind of like briefly meeting 50 yeah just having a real conversation with even two yeah like yeah it's way more valuable yeah, and I'd rather do that with, like, and I'll go intentionally, like, I'll go to conferences where I know I'm going to do business with people, right? Yeah. So, like, when Remax had their, uh, I forget what they were called now, I'll set up connect events or whatever they were in different locations. Like, there were certain ones where I thought, you know, I'm not really going to do business that way. Like, there's just not a movement of people from, yeah. from that area here. But there is from, like, say, Hamilton to Guelph or Hamilton yeah. to London. So I'll make sure to go there and Hamilton to Ottawa. And I'll go there and I'll specifically meet, you know, three or four or five people that I can sit and talk with and actually get to know yeah. um, outside of real estate. Like, I'll talk to them about business. Like, how's the business going and what they do yeah. for business, any tips and tricks they might have all that kind of stuff. But then we just chat. We'll chat about like, hey, did you see, are you going to go see the new Avengers movie? Or are you going to yeah. go, like, what are you watching on Netflix or whatever, right? Like, who are you kind of thing. And when you go to those conferences and you get those, are you researching ahead of time, like, these are the five people I want to have conversations with? Or are you going and just like, you happen to be meeting five people and you just go in depth with the people you meet? Yeah, a little bit of both. Like, um, especially if there's people that I know online who I haven't met yet. Yeah. Then I'll make a specific point of finding them, right, yeah. and meeting them, um, just because I want to get to know them better and stuff. Because you know, in our group specifically, I think there's probably like out of thirty-one people in the group, I think there's maybe three that I haven't met personally yet. Um, like Carlton's one and Colin, and, out, yeah. and they're mostly guys on the West them, Coast yeah. and stuff yeah. that I just haven't had a chance. They were referred by other people. Um, so I, I just all the active them. people in the group I've met. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. All of them I do know. Um, but yeah, but I'll make a point though of like, I, I wanted to go down to Inman, not this past January, back in uh, 2018. Uh, cause I knew Billy and I had already met Matthew, but I knew Billy would be there. Yeah. Right. So I thought, okay, well, you know what? I'll, I'll bite the bullet cause I've been thinking about going for years yeah. and I'll go specifically because I want to meet him face to face. And we had chatted behind the scenes plenty. Um, so it, occasionally I'll do that. Um, but for the most part, or if I know somebody's in town, um, like there was a conference in Niagara Falls, I wasn't going to the conference, but I knew Sarah Kalke would be there. Yeah. So we chatted and we decided to meet up just to have dinner or go for a walk somewhere. Um, so I will pick people that I really want to meet and do business with. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I'm just pretty open. Like I'll, yeah. like I don't really, I'm a wanderer. I don't really stick to any one group or one table kind of thing. I'm just around and I'll talk to everybody and I like connecting other people. Yeah. So I've had like um, people from my brokerage have come to Vegas to go to R4, and if they're there for the first or second time, like we used to have the Canadian networking dinner yeah. type thing, um, and I'll put them together and I'll grab people from my office and be like, hey, "Where do you want to know somebody from?" Yeah. And they'd be like, "Oh, like Calgary." I'm like, "Okay, come here. We'll go talk to this person and we'll introduce them to somebody from Calgary or something like that, right?" And yeah. just put them together and then I just leave and I'll go find some other people kind of thing. Yeah. I enjoy that part of it. Um, that's why I like the referral groups because I don't mind um, and I don't take referrals for connecting other people. No. Like I've seen, I've seen some people do, which I think is kind of weird. Um, but I have no issue like Kinsey Lee from down in Florida. Um, she messaged me just out of the blue. I, went, it, I had interviewed her. Uh, so it's not quite out of the blue because I knew her. So she messaged me because she needed somebody to... Um, help a friend of hers sell some land in Quebec and I was on the river in Quebec and she's like 
well, you know, you're up in Canada. You know everybody up there. Yeah. Who, who should I talk to? Do you know to? John from and <laughs> <laughs> Mike from Canmore. Yeah. And I said, yeah. I said, well, give me a second. So I, I dropped that message and I, and I added her on with uh, some agents out in Ottawa. I said, I don't know, but they do. And yeah. uh, just connected them and we were all in the chat and then they started chatting and they're like, well, and then I just dropped out yeah. and I'll see you later. And then they went and took care of it kind of thing. Um, so I, I, that's the part of the industry that I really like. Yeah. Um, and that's where I've kind of built most of my business, I think. Like I'm not like a million dollar a year agent yet. Yeah. <laughs> sort of every year the business is growing, it's moving in that direction, but it's not anywhere near that yet. Um, but about it's it's transitioned from being like a lot of prospecting to just a lot of networking. Yeah. So like 60, 60, 65 percent of my business is realtor referrals. Yeah. Um, so I'm just getting people. How much of that is in brand, like within the Remax agents versus outside of Remax? Yeah, it's probably about seventy thirty. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably that I do get I get random calls, which is kind of funny because people I've never met. Um, from brands that have offices in our city, yeah. but they're still calling me because they just, I've got a decent presence, presence online and they yeah. know people that know me kind of thing. Um, but probably about 65, 70% of it is, uh, in brand, like other Remax agents. Yeah. Um, and about the other 30, 35% is everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And it works. You want another beer? Yeah. I could always have another beer. Sounds good. A brief pause. We're grabbing another beer. Or I jam my finger, it's like I can't lift. I can only use like this part of my hand to lift uh, right now. <laughs> uh, anyone you want? I uh, don't know. Dinosaurs. <laughs> we'll go a black and white. Let's see what it is. Himalayan, pink Himalayan salt and coriander. Oh, yeah, I've had that one before. It's interesting. Is that a good, interesting, or a bad? It's not terrible. Well, not terrible. We'll see what that review turns into. I don't know. All right. So I am this time drinking, actually, nice art on it, a Prophets and Nomads Pink Himalayan Salt and Coriander. And Tony's review of this is, it's not terrible. So we'll see. It's an acquired taste. It's coriander <laughs> in a beer. Right. Yeah. This is, uh, and coriander, I just found, I think ground coriander seeds are like, uh, what's that stuff called? Not parsley, uh, cilantro. Has that kind of a cilantro taste. So if you don't like That's cilantro, weird. I don't mind like cilantro it. on the right thing. Well, there you go. I have a state of mind session IPA with a dinosaur on it. So it's got a dinosaur. <laughs> I so get the collective art ones. Yeah. I just picked the nicest can. I always do. I just... Well, that's always a thing I find interesting. Just like when you're looking at sales stuff, is like wine, for example. The biggest driver of sales is what's the what's the label? Like yeah. I don't drink wine, but like I often pick it up for like my wife, or like if I'm going somewhere, I bring people a bottle. A hundred percent, I just pick based on what the label looks like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about the wines I'm buying. Turns uh, out wine drinkers do the same thing. So cheers. Yeah. You well. Excuse me. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> that it doesn't taste like beer. <laughs> no, I think it's it's not bad, but that doesn't it's, taste it's, like it's beer. It's not terrible. Yeah, it's not <laughs> terrible. But it, yeah, it doesn't taste like beer. No, not at all. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, like you know what, like most people, mm -hmm. and I kind of it, it does always. I try to relate it back to real estate because that's what we're talking about. But it kind of works that way in real estate too, though. It's like for wine drinking, like you said. Most people aren't wine drinking experts. No. Right? They just aren't. They're not they're not sommeliers. They don't they don't taste wine all the time. Most people are looking for something that's like affordable. Yep. Right? They don't want to spend a ton of money on a bottle of wine because they're not experts. They're not gonna know the difference between like this hundred dollar bottle of wine and a ten dollar bottle. Um, so yeah, they just look at the label. Right, they look at it, it's like that's a neat looking yeah. girls' night out. Okay, yeah, <laughs> we're having a girls' like night out. Rose. Let's take that one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Or uh, a lot of the um, a megalomaniac brand. Yep. They've got some wicked branding. I, I'm a, a marketing geek too. I love branding. Ever since I was a kid, I used to go to the library before Google and the internet and all that yeah. stuff. I used to go to the libraries and get. There's like this huge volume that comes out every year. I can't remember the name of it, but. It's basically the best marketing of the year and marketing awards or something yeah. like that. And they come magazine marketing and they'll compile them into this big book. And I used to sit there and just turn the pages and just look at it all. Yeah. I just love the design and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> These big old musty books. 
And uh, so I look at the megalomaniac wine bottle labels, and they've got the ones where the people don't have faces, but they got like a hat and a suit. Yeah. And the, the branding is just brilliant. So I buy them all the time, and they're yeah. like, they're okay. They're, they're. I'm not going to say they're great. I'm not going to say they're terrible. I wouldn't know the difference anyways. Yeah. Uh, but they're local. They're, they're here in the Niagara region. Um, and they have some wicked branding. And I went to their winery. And they're a lot of fun. And they're really nice. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to buy them. I'm going to support that brand. Yeah. right? I'm going to buy their stuff. And then real estate, I think it kind of does that too. Because like most people don't transact real estate very often. Right? Like in my entire life, I'm 46 at this point, and including where I lived with my parents, I think I've been in like six, maybe seven different houses Mm -hmm. and an apartment in there somewhere. Uh, And that's with like even being married, I had an apartment, then we moved to a townhouse, then we built a house, and now I'm in another townhouse. Mm -hmm. That's four, just in in that amount of time. Um, But generally speaking, most people don't transact real estate very often, so they don't deal with real estate agents very often. So they don't necessarily have a specific attraction to one agent Mm -hmm. unless, and most agents aren't good at following up, like staying in touch, (laughs) like long term. And like the NAR, the NAR stats will prove it. If you look at it, it's like the number of people that reuse the same agent is like abysmally low at this point. I think the number is 78% of people would use the same agent Mm -hmm. if they could remember who it was. Right. And it's something like 14% of people actually do. I thought it was higher, but yeah, maybe. it's probably, it's in that ballpark though. Yeah. It's pretty low. Like it's yeah. Wild. It's one in one in five, maybe. Mm-hmm. Right. That's 20%. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. And so it's, they don't necessarily have that loyalty. Um, there's a very small percentage of the overall group of agents that actually really do have programs where they stay in touch with customers long term mm-hmm. after the fact. And there are clients who just don't want you to stay in touch. Like yeah. they just did the, they're transactional. They just did the purchase or the sale and like, no, I don't want a Christmas card from you every year. Oh, I the don't... time's changing. I should set my clock. Yes. I don't need to know. <laughs> I don't need the, the happy St. Patrick's okay. day remix yeah. <laughs> brand on it. Uh, they don't need any of that stuff. They just don't want it. Some people love it. Right. Yeah. Like, I, like it's a really, it's a real mixed bag. Right. But your branding will attract them because they're just like in the moment. Yeah. Right. So they're just looking at, um, like who's, cool and flashy and who looks and that's why all different kinds of marketing like we were talking about before we started recording that I don't really slam anybody for their marketing unless it's actually really offensive Um, like there's some stuff that's just like in poor taste right and then and that's just you know that just doesn't look good on the industry Um, and I do like to sort of where I can I think I have coriander in my beer (laughs) well like I look at it too like I'll look at there's so many different ways to build a business. And like, obviously I have the bias on like Facebook advertising sure. and content marketing, but like, I also know it's not for everyone. Like most yeah. of our sales calls now we're actually talking people out of hiring us because we know they're not a good fit. Mm-hmm. And like, I personally hate being cold called. I hate cold calling. Yep. But I have very good friends who have an amazing business that's built entirely on cold calling. Yep. And I don't look down on it. It's more of a, they're really good at that great yeah <laughs> not for me but i respect it because like they do a great job with it yeah there's a guy that i spoke to and i can't remember who he was or i saw him in a conference somewhere where he had it down to a science when he was like yep yeah, i know that every door i knock on is worth 50 bucks yeah because he's worked it out to like i need to knock on this many doors to to arrive at a one completed transaction therefore you know every and he, that's how he motivates himself is why yeah. I just even though they said no I just made 50 bucks and I'm on to the next one right and yeah that works for you that's great and I'm talking even just more about the actual content of the marketing it's just like you know there are people like the majority of people like nice advertising you know nice friendly advertising that yeah. you know and that presents you as a as a human being like we were saying talking about things yeah. other than real estate um, so there's like cause marketing now, they call it like if you're involved in charities and yeah. that sort of thing. Um, and they just want to know that you're part of the community, that you're a human being, that they like you and all that sort of stuff, which is where the influencers, I think are, are gaining some ground there. Um, but there are people again, who are very transactional yeah. and they just want to know who's the best agent. Right. And they don't care that you're doing charity and yeah. whatever else. They just want to know that you're the number one agent they in the new market. The bottom line to them. Yeah, and they want to know yeah. how much money they can save by working with you. So there's yeah. there's room for that as well, and then there's room for like who is the number one agent in the new market, 
And if it, whether you are or not, the fact that you're saying that you are, and you've got some other things on there, say whether they're legitimate or not, will attract a certain yeah. client, right? And they're of the same mentality th yeah. that you have, right? They're just in and out. Uh, they don't want to have a relationship with you. They're all about the numbers. And so that's why I don't, I don't really slam anybody. If somebody's out there just, you know, pasting all the different awards that they've won and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. And I know, like, there's some bogusness to that all. And I think most yeah. people do. Like, a lot of these, like, um, a lot of these awards, like, they're from, like, magazines and newspapers and stuff. Like, yeah, you're you buying them. Yeah, they call you up and say, hey, would you like to apply for this award? And you're like, oh, yeah, sure, I'd like to maybe try it out. Okay, it'll cost you 3000 in marketing, and then we'll enter you. And it's like, oh, yeah. well, that's how it works. Okay, I get it. Um, so I think consumers generally are pretty leery of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So I, I'm not crazy about it, and I don't do it myself because of that reason. Um but it does attract a certain type of client. Yeah, because everybody's gonna do something different, right? Mm -hmm. So like you said, pe some people are loving door knocking, yeah. right, and they're killing it. I've never done it. I have, hated it. I, I, I've been to neighborhoods where I've dropped off postcards and flyers yeah. and stuff, but I've never actually knocked on doors to like bother people to come to yeah. the door and kind of thing. Um, more because I had time, just early, early on, and I had time, it was, nice weather outside. I'm like, all right, I got a morning. I don't have anything scheduled. I don't have a mm -hmm. uh, training or anything like that. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to this neighborhood, save the money from whatever postage, whatever, and just walk the neighborhood and just drop off. If I happen to run into people, great. But like you said, I hate coming to the door to answer the door. And I'm sure it'll work. Like I know yeah. people that do it and they've got their scripts and, and they, and then, again, even using scripts, some people have aversions to that kind of yeah. thing. Um, and I know people have said they'll knock, but to me, it's like, I've seen it and I've talked to guys who are out there doing it and it comes down to the one guy, t maybe, and maybe he's just horrible at it. I don't know, but he's telling me he knocked on like 400 doors or 450 doors and he booked two appointments or something. Yeah. Now, like I was actually probably closer to that stats than like the good ones. Like I've probably knocked on over 1500 doors. Mm. I can probably track three leases and three sales max yeah like which you know what like if you've got the time it's, 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 it's free <laughs> yeah. when you're starting out and you want to hustle and you want to see i don't know if it's actually hustling or if it's just making you feel like you're hustling i know that's what it is it's yeah like, but it's also like as much as i did not do well with it there's good experience in like one just getting comfortable talking to anyone sure and then learning okay here's the questions people are going to ask if they engage now i got to go learn those answers. Because I sold for just over two years. Yeah. But I would say, like, until I, like, figured it out, it was, like, a year and a half. Oh, but yeah. Then I figured it out, and, like, I was basically getting leads like clockwork coming in. Yeah. But yeah. it took me a good year and a half. And I think that's good. the case with everybody, right? You kind of... Mm -hmm. It depends on, depends where background you're coming from. But yeah. for the most part, I think that's most people. And I, I guess it just depends what you feel like when you feel comfortable with, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have an issue talking to people and stuff. If you do, you shouldn't be in real estate. No. Right? I mean, that's just, that kind of goes without saying, yeah. I guess. But, but like, I was me back then. Like, I, yeah. like, I used to be that guy, like, if I went to a party, you'd often find me, like, by myself with, like, the wallflower, kind of, like, I didn't like interrupting conversations and joining in. Mm -hmm. I would never be caught dead speaking in front of people. Yeah. And then just... Now I actually love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do learn, you grow, you do you do different mm -hmm. things. I just wonder, like, especially in, in the real estate industry, oh, I guess pretty much every sales industry, there's always people trying to sell you something. Yeah. Right. Whatever kind of new service it is, hey, it's only fifteen bucks a month. It's only thirty bucks mm -hmm. a month. And if it's not working, you just spend a little bit more, mm -hmm. just drop a little bit more money into it. It'll eventually it'll work and all this kind of stuff. And it's hard. It's hard to sort of weed out. The ones that are just there to make you feel like you're doing something, yeah. um, and you know, bringing up Conrad again, his big <laughs> his big thing is that um, it's the three E's of training, right? Education without execution is just entertainment. Yeah. And most of the people who are there are there for entertainment, yeah. right? Because you'll see them. Um, I've done it probably once or twice there, where I've gone back and taken the same course more than once because a it's free, mm -hmm. um, probably because I had time that I, I could do it. And I figured, oh, maybe there's something new this time around, right? Like yeah. a year later, maybe he's done something new. And no, it's the same kind yeah. of 
basic sort of stuff, like whether it's setting up a marketing calendar or, yeah. or whatever it might be. And he jokes in there. He goes, well, you know, he, he, he'll, he's pretty blunt. So in there he's like, yeah, about 80% of you were here last year. He goes, yeah. how many of you did anything with what I taught you last year? Yeah. And it's like the, the heads all go down. It's like, mm. Well, like with my background in training or I was like training for Remax, like yeah. probably did training sessions with thousands of agents, especially yeah. now since just so homes, like thousands more. Like, yeah. I know realistically we have a pretty good uptake if 1% of the people take action. Yep. Like if 1% do something, yep. that's actually pretty good. Yep. I used to teach right. people all the time over and over again how to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's like the fifth time I've been here yeah. showing you how to do this. Like, yeah. what's up, man? <laughs> you know? And I remember it was Gary Vee, actually, that uh, he spoke at Kickstart the first year that I started. Um, so he was a keynote speaker at Kickstart. So I'm sure this was like before he blew up and was way yeah. too expensive. Um, and he's up on stage, like the closing speaker at uh, on the second day. And everybody's killing themselves laughing because he's up there dropping F-bombs and all this yeah. kind of stuff. Right? And I'm sitting there like trying to listen to him. And I'm like, all right, I get, I get where he was coming from. And he's kind of telling the story how he got started on Twitter with his yeah. wine business, his family's wine business and all that. And at one point he stops and he asks... So he tells people, he's like, you know, people ask me all the time, he's like, why are you basically giving away all your secrets? Like, yeah. why are you telling people how to do this? Aren't you afraid you're gonna, your competitors are going to come in and scoop up all your secrets and kill you kind of thing? And he's like, well, no. He's like, A, they pay me a lot of fucking money. <laughs> so I'm here because you guys paid me a lot of money to be here. So that's number one. Because number two, I, so I know that 99.9% .9 of you out there, and there's a big room of people are all laughing and giggling and even some of you taking notes and all this kind of stuff and 99.9% .9 of you aren't going to do a damn thing. Yeah. You're going to leave here and not do any of the things that I told you you should do or you should look into and stuff like that. So what am I, what do I got to be worried about? Yeah. I'll tell you all my secrets because I know you're not going to do it. Right. And that's the big, big problem. And I know with um, a lot of the companies now, so I'm on the Inman group too, the Inman coast to coast group. So you see all the announcements about, you know, KW and their their new platform coming out and, and yeah. Remax has their thing coming out and all this kind of stuff. And it's 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 great for the agents that will, will uptake it. Yeah. Right. And I think I'm one of the Which ones is very small. Yeah. It's a really small group. I think I'm one of the ones who will at least try it and yeah. stuff. So I'll use if you give me tools, I'll use them. I'll try at yeah. least and see if they're if they're useful to me and my business and if not then I won't. Um, but overwhelming majority won't. Uh, so to make a big fuss out of them, I mean, it's great, but I think it's it acts almost more like a carrot yeah. to say that, hey, we've got this kind of thing. Tool. Yeah, to recruit new agents, to bring them on and say, hey, look, all these great tools that we have and blah, 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 blah. And the thing is, they are great tools. If you get in there and you actually use the CRM that they give you yeah. and actually use the whatever it might be, the, the scripts or the, the databases that they, management that they have and all that kind of stuff, um, you will be successful despite yourself. But most people just won't, for whatever reason, they lack that motivation, they, there's a skills gap, uh, there's a training gap. Um, I don't know, I don't know what the answer is. But I think a lot of the people go, and I think this is a lot of the people that go to things like a lot of the motivational speaking seminars, oh, that are there for like the fifth yeah. time, sixth time, it's like it's like their form of entertainment. Yeah. It's like they're going to a rock concert every year. This is my this is my uh, this is my Coldplay concert this year. Yeah. I'm gonna go see whoever on like Tony Robbins or yeah. whoever. We're gonna do a firewalk and you know whatever. And this is what you know when to pay hundreds if not thousands of dollars to be here. Yeah. And then they leave and their productivity year to year doesn't change. Yeah, like I can see it on a much much smaller scale. Sure. Of like people coming to me being like, I just love listening to you speak. But sure. they've seen me, like, I can think of one specifically. He's probably seen me 15 times. Slight variations in the talks, but basically it's the same theme across all 15. Yeah. And every time he's like, that was awesome, I love it, can't wait to hear the next one. And then I look at what he's doing, and he has literally done nothing from any of them. Yeah. But he's just like it's it's a good entertainment for him, basically. Yeah, it's motivational in some cases. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. I mean, if that's if that's your thing and that that's what keeps you going, great. Um, as I slowly get covered in dog care, yeah, just 
so you know. The I, problem I with a husky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's multiple layers. And this husky <laughs> smells my chihuahua, so she loves yeah. me today. <laughs> your chihuahua's going to love you when you get I back. know. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that my, I don't know if your dog too, maybe my dog, as soon as I get back from showings, yeah. it smells my feet. Yeah. All day, like um, for an hour. For her, it's a crotch. Ah, uh, there you go. She goes straight to crotch and butt. Well, she's bigger. Mine's little. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, but yeah, but if I've been at yeah. showings, because, you know, your shoes are off in everybody's house. You've been in 10 different houses. Yeah. I'm usually, if you're watching my social feeds, I'm attacked by cats regularly. Yeah. So I get home and they'll, he'll spend literally like an hour just sniffing <laughs> my feet. It's like, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> so many new smells. Oh, yeah. But yeah, but getting back to the other stuff, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I see it, and I, I've been to a lot of conferences. I usually, honestly, at this point, end up skipping most of the training stuff. Me too. I'm there to network. Yeah. You know, I'm there to meet people. I'll sit in on specific speakers that I find interesting, but I've heard it before. Like, it's yeah. not, to, for me at this point, and I think for most agents at this point, it's not a matter of not knowing what you should be doing. It's just a matter of doing it. Yeah, and I, right? that's like the group I started, which I'm not trying to promote it here, but it's like the entire idea was like, let's help you implement yeah. what you actually learn, because like that's where the value is in actually yeah. doing it. Like, I'd say like majority of success in my career has nothing to do with something I know that's different than anyone else. Like, I just no. don't do it. Yeah. Like, I learned something and I take action on it. Yeah. Like, that's the majority of, like, yeah, I came from no concrete same. forming. Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with real estate or marketing. Yeah. Like, like yeah. kind of real estate, but. Yeah, yeah. That's no, it. Like, no, exactly. And I think, you know, when I get asked, like, I've been asked to be on, like, interviews like this and podcasts, and I'm doing well. I'm doing reasonably well. Um, I'm not killing it in the real estate space by any means. I'm doing well in social media and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. I think that's what people like, the branding yeah. side. So I'll go and talk about it, and that's yeah. great. Um, but again, uh, the people that I talk with, I spoke at R4 on a panel. And for, I was pretty much the first person to speak. So I, I we kind of asked the group, does everybody know what an algorithm is? Yeah. You know, and they're kind of like dead eyes. Everybody's kind of silent. So I kind of explained it. I go, well, this is the Facebook algorithm and here's kind of how it works. Yeah. Um, so if you're, put, if you're putting up good content that people like, mm -hmm. like they'll put it out and then it'll, they'll continue to promote it. If you're putting out stuff that people don't like or comment on or whatever, they'll bury it, right? Yeah. That's just basically how it works. Facebook's a... Uh, a TV channel, yeah. right? So if they don't like, if they're not getting good ratings, they'll bury you, right? Yeah. But if you're contributing to good ratings, then they'll promote you. And I said, you know, my last comment was, so basically, you know, I told them, that I'm not planning on engaging with any of your pages, so please don't send me like yeah. 200 requests to like your business page once we're done here. Ignore all of them. <laughs> because I will not like them, because I'm yeah. just, I'm actually hurting you, because I don't have the time in the day to yeah. answer or to engage with the Which hundreds. <laughs> yeah, or just like the hundreds, like literally at this point, hundreds of pages I've been asked to like. It's like, hey, like my page, I'll like your page kind of thing, we'll trade likes. And it's like, I don't have it's time. A metric. Yeah, and I don't have time to engage with you. So if I'm the one seeing your content, mm -hmm. I'm scrolling by it to, to find the people that I actually do business with, yeah. to engage with them, to see my past clients. Who are friends with me on Facebook or whatever, so I can engage with them, not you. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually hurting you. And then, so I said that, and the very next guy that comes up, that was up to me, is like, "Yeah, I don't care about any of that. Yeah, you can you can send me your likes. I'll like you and all this kind of <laughs> stuff." I was like, mm, "All right, yeah. sure, okay, whatever, man." But there's a big value in like understanding just how it all works. Sure. To how to take advantage, like, and I never like I hate those like tricks to like yeah just, like. One of the big things lately that's really been annoying me is the posts by like, and to be honest, it's mostly marketing gurus. Sure. Who are like, hey, I wrote this great ebook on like seven ways to win a listing presentation. If I get a hundred comments, I'll release it. Yeah. Like, shut up, just release it. Like, no. You're gonna either. release it either way. But you're not getting mine. <laughs> yeah. Like, and like I see that and I roll my eyes and like, they're like, I've actually will now av actively avoid your content. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll unfriend you. I'll just move you out of the way or hide you or whatever. Yeah. Or the ones that just ask questions. You know, it's conference season when <laughs> all of a sudden there's a whole huge group of real estate agents all asking you the same question. Yeah. Like, what's your, what's, how many times a day do you drink coffee or something, yeah. something to engage you to do something? Yeah. Or it's like, what is the, I forget what the question was. I'm always, I'm always the snarky one. I just, I just mm -hmm. don't care. So, I mean, I, I find Facebook itself just, 
absurd as a concept, just as a thing. It, it's absurd. And the fact that people take it as seriously as it does, as much as I use it for business, the fact that people take what's on there as seriously as they do, I find absurd. It's, it's, it's hilarious to me. Um, so I don't mind being snarky sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit too much, but that's mm -hmm. eh. <laughs> the way it goes. Uh, but those questions that are like, uh, what, is, what is the one thing that you wish you did today that you didn't do today so that you would have saved you time or the one thing that you, you do on yeah. Facebook that you wish you did less of? And my answer is answer fewer Facebook questions. <laughs> it's yeah. just, just it, man. And it's usually, like you said, it's the social media gurus or wannabe gurus yeah. that ask you all that kind of stuff or the people that are taking obviously posed photographs yeah. like they're supposed to look very casual but it's like ha, 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 snap yeah. it's like oh man come on this yeah yeah it's just there's so much of that right now well, like i know i could boost my engagement boost my following sure by doing some of that bullshit yeah but it's bullshit <laughs> yeah the, the the furthest extent that i'll go to it's like i'll look at the insights i'll look at you know, time of day that's good for posting, so I know when my my yeah. audience is active. So because I want, I do want them to see what I'm putting there. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not all the way the other way that it's like you know, just don't care about it yeah. kind of thing. Like I do know how it works, and I and I am there to to get people's eyeballs on me so I can do business, right? Whether it's for me personally yeah. or to promote my clients' listings or whatever. Um, so I will look at the insights to see what days of the week, what time of the day, that sort of thing. Um, if I'm doing stuff that nobody's responding to, then I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and if I'm doing stuff that Do I'm getting... Do you ever delete posts that get nothing? No. No, you just leave them up? I think I've done it once or twice. Like, okay. I, I posted something, and uh, I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of a dud. It's been there for a while, and nobody cares. I'm like, mm. I think maybe once or twice I've done that years yeah. ago. And then after that, I just thought, man, yeah, it it's there, so I mean, might as well just leave it there at this point. Mm -hmm. Unless I unless I go back and I'm like on second thought, and maybe that wasn't the best thing to post. Yeah. If it's kind of like, hmm, maybe people are reading There's this. There's a line. And I was like, like, well, either I'm at the line or I'm thinking maybe people could read it as being yeah. over the line. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should take that down. That I generally try and be respectful um, when I'm actually having a discussion. I actually yeah. like to have reasonably intelligent discussions about whether it's real estate or anything else. And so the, the whole landscape is changing. And it's just like, what do you think about the changes to, to supposedly to Facebook now where the newsfeed is going to disappear, supposedly? It won't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't see how it will, but if, they're, if, they, if what they're saying is true, if you get rid of the newsfeed and all you're left with is stories and video feeds they occasionally won't. or something like that. Newsfeed's not cool. No, I don't. I don't know how they attract people if you don't have that. They won't. Or how they advertise to people if you don't have that, which is the yeah. point of Facebook. Yeah, no, they're not gonna. Like, I, I, well, I haven't heard that, but. Well, literally. the dude who's the content head, one of the head content creators got fired, and he was the one sort of responsible for the newsfeed and stuff. And the supposedly, yeah, mean, like, supposedly the away. spin after that was like, oh, the newsfeed's gone. This is all, and you never know. The algorithm is changing. Everybody loses their minds. If they get rid of newsfeed, it's just to rebrand to a different name. Like sure, because that is Facebook now. Like yeah, you don't go. Like very rarely does anyone log in. Like okay, I'm gonna go look at this person's page and go through it. It's I'm going onto my newsfeed and scrolling down. Yeah. They're not gonna get rid of the majority of their time on the platform. Yeah. So and that's how you use Instagram and Twitter too. You're just yeah. flipping. You're just scrolling through to see what's yeah. interesting, right? How much do you use Twitter? I don't. <laughs> I'm there. I have an account. I used to use it more uh, for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. If I remember that I'm doing like I'm doing an interview with you, yeah. then I'll post it there. But I'll put it on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. and I'll forget to do it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. If I remember, I'll put it there. I usually use Twitter to talk to people. Yeah. So like if I've just read a comic book, I'll I'll tag the creators and I'd be like, Hey, I really like this issue. How long did it take you to how long does it normally take you to draw an issue? Yeah. Or stuff like that. And um we'll have a, and generally speaking, we'll have a pretty good back and forth yeah. with the actual artists and stuff like that. Well outside of like big stars, almost yeah. everyone responds on that. Yeah, I mean, if you're a comic book creator and stuff like that, especially, you're not like a big rock you're star not or anything like that. You're getting a million comments a day. No, no. So they're generally pretty good, and I've had some yeah. really good back-and-forth conversations with them about, like, the process, like how long yeah. it takes to draw, 
what about this panel, that panel, or funny things that I saw in the panels, um, all that kind of stuff. And even with wrestlers and stuff, it, we get the occasional one. The very first one I had sort of success with that kind of kind of blew my mind and my kids too was was uh, Edge, the yeah. WWE wrestler from Toronto. Yeah. And uh, he's retired for years. And me and my two boys were going to go see our first WWE show in Toronto. At, it was a Monday night live recording, so it was going to be live to air recording. And Edge was coming back to make an appearance, like this first one in like years. And my my oldest son, this was years ago now, but he's a huge Edge fan. So he made a poster that he was going to bring on a big Bristol board to hold it up so the Edge could see it. So he took a picture and put it up on Twitter and tagged the Edge in it. And he uh, almost immediately liked it and retweeted it to like half a million of his followers yeah. and stuff, right? And that moment was like, Oh my God! <laughs> he noticed. It could have been his PR people. I don't know. I, yeah. I'm presuming it was him. Uh, but it's like, oh my God! He noticed us, and he showed like <laughs> half a million people yeah. are like picture of my kid holding up his poster and stuff. It blew. I mean, I was excited about it. It blew yeah. my son's mind. He was just like, oh my! We still yeah. have the poster hiding behind my my yeah. washing machine at home, kind of thing. Um, but once it, once that happened, it was like, oh okay, I guess this is what we can use it for, right? Yeah. And we started. Um, yeah, any, anytime I want to talk to like a celebrity of any, yeah. any sort of stature, uh, yeah, we'll tag them and just, you know, and I do kind of the same thing on Instagram a little bit. There's a few, yeah. there's a few cosplayers that I know that I've met over the years, um, that I kind of follow them and I'll tag them every once in a while. Be like, Hey, I really like this. this is really funny. You're awesome. Whatever. Yeah. And they'll kind of have a back and forth kind of thing. Um, there's an artist down in Tulum that, uh, I really like her work. Erica Arndt, if you ever see her. So I've had like behind the, the direct messaging yeah. kind of stuff about what she's doing and that sort of stuff. So it's really awesome for that kind of thing. I don't know um, marketing wise how effective it is. I mean, there's still um, depends on what you're going for. <laughs> yeah, there's still there's still millions of people there. Like yeah. just, so, there's eyeballs there. I don't know what they're there for. I don't know if they're all there to follow Donald Trump no. or or whoever the the next. Uh, the scandal of the day is kind of thing. That's usually what I see on Twitter is just people like freaking out over stuff. Yeah. Well, like that also like similar to Facebook, Twitter's a little harder to do it the same way, but like depending on who you follow and the topics you're choosing, mm. it changes what you see. So like Facebook, I made a point of anyone who basically posted anything pro or anti-Trump, I unfollowed. Mm -hmm. And since I did that, Facebook's a much happier place. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, it's fun. Like, yeah. I, I genuinely enjoy Facebook, but I knew how to, like, manipulate the algorithm yeah. to make my feed a good thing. Yeah. Where, if you don't know how to do that, and Twitter is similar, like, Twitter is like, it can be a dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I love sports. I follow sure. sports on there a lot. And, or, like, I've been on an episode of Daily V with Gary V. Yeah. Because of Twitter. Yeah. That wouldn't happen without Twitter. Yeah. And I, I make lists. So I've got lists of... So I can go into my list of people that I follow. So I'll segregate yeah. people into, like, comic book artists or real estate people or influencers or whatever. So I, I don't really go to the, just like the main feed. Yeah. I'll go specifically to those lists and look at what I need to look no, at, right? Um, I still main feed it almost entirely. Yeah. But I... Yeah, like, I've like I don't unfollow. I mute. So, yeah. like, my feed is pretty curated of... Yeah, it's stuff I find interesting. Yeah, but even even then, I'm just not there very often. Yeah. Like if I if I jump on Twitter once a week, it's yeah. because I'm sitting around and I'm like, I just closed Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Twitter. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so like, the do you have an iPhone? No. I so don't. a new newer thing in the past few months is Screen Time reports. Okay, so once yeah. a week, they send you a report of like how much time you've been on your phone each day. Sure. So when I look at it. I actually, on my phone, spend more time on Twitter than Facebook now. Yeah. Um, but, like, I love Twitter, but I also don't even use it for work, too. So, yeah, I like, get sports, news, Wheel of Time is a big one yeah. on there. Because, like, <laughs> the writers of it are all on there. Yeah. And, like, everyone's anticipating the show coming out, so they're big on there. But, like, yeah. even when I sold, Twitter was amazing. Because yeah. what I did is I connected with all the local politicians and the local journalists because yeah. they're all active on there. Yeah. And I became like the real estate guy to people on Twitter in Aurora 
because like I remember the town of Aurora decided to do a um, like should we expand the heritage zoning in town mm -hmm. and they brought me in as the guy to talk to about heritage zone in <laughs> town I had been in the business eight months yeah I knew nothing like before I had to go like have that chat I had to go to experienced agents in my office to ask them about it. Sure. So I knew what to talk about when I went. Yeah. But because I was the one active, they came yeah. to me. Yeah. And that's the good and the bad of it, right? It's like mm -hmm. you can, uh, you get mis... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, if you're looking for something, yeah. it's easy to mislead people too, yeah. right? I should not have been the guy that came to. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly, right? And then yeah. I get a little bit of that too. Like I said, I, I try to limit what... If people ask me to go on like a podcast or um, go speak on a panel, like I spoke on a panel at one of your conferences too, yeah. I try to only accept or limit it to things that I actually know something about. Because yeah. I get asked a lot to go on yeah. a lot of different things, and I'm just like, no, I'm just like not the guy. That was like right? when I was a trainer. Like I remember, I had to do a, I had to do a two hour session on how to farm a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't an offline or an online thing. It was just mm -hmm. how to farm a neighborhood. I'm like, I don't, that's not something I ever did. Yeah. But I had to train it. So like, I remember my session ended up being, I went to three agents I knew who did that, interviewed them, turned that into a course. And yeah. I just regurgitated what they said. But I'm yeah. like, now I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, I only want to talk about things I know from experience. So yeah. like, I only now talk about things that I personally have done or have yeah. done for clients. Yeah. And, you know, if people are asking me to do things that I can learn about, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're asking me how to build, like, a successful team, yeah, I don't know. Not. I don't run one, yeah. right? <laughs> or if you're asking me how to be, like, a, a diamond-level, million-dollar-a-year agent, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, yeah, I, know, <laughs> I, I know people who are. Yeah. I definitely do. I'm friends with a lot of people who are, actually. And I can find it. Like, just in our brokerage, I think we've got four or five of the top 100 teams in Canada no. in our brokerage. So I can, and I know them all. I'm, I'm friends with no. all of them. So I could go and talk to them and then yeah. get you some information. I could ask them to be on because yeah. <laughs> they're really the ones that should no, be talking easy. about it. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? At that point, you know, you got to kind of know what your limits are. But going back to sort of the feed, I like what you said is right. Like, I mean, I, I unfollow everybody almost immediately. Yeah. So if I get a friend request, I, I accept a friend request and then I unfollow. Yeah. Right. Because I just don't want it all showing up in my yeah. feed. It's like two thousand people, right? Yeah, if they post one thing a day each, it's like getting two thousand emails a day yeah. on top of enough. on top of all my other stuff that's yeah. there, right? So there's, like, there's just no way, and I just I don't need to know everything that happens in your life every day. Yeah. So I'll jump on there, and I'll for people that I'm interested in, I'll go find them, yeah. or I'll make them active kind of thing. So there's like um, a couple of like real referral groups that I'm part of that are active, but I'll see yeah. their posts. Um, there's our geeky group at Lorg, and there's maybe at two or three other little things yeah. that will pop up. Everything else is, is silence because it's just too much. Yeah. It's just way too much. But the thing is, like, like you said, knowing how it works kind of helps you take advantage of the platform. And that's, that's my only sort of caution to a lot of people who get early success with it. So a lot of people that I was on the panel with, they're... They were there because they're doing really well on social media, yeah. whether it's like Instagram, Snapchat, you name it, right? They're doing really well. They've got a really good presence. Um, a lot of people, like myself included, kind of stumbled into it, Yeah. right? They were just kind of like, I just liked Facebook. Like I said, before I was even in real estate, I just used it a lot. I'm the kind of person that likes engaging with people. I'm the kind of person that likes entertaining people. Yeah. Like I'll draw stuff and put it up there just for people's entertainment. You know, and it's like, if they like it, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll do some more of that, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And that was, that was my mentality, but that was kind of how the algorithm works. Yeah. They like it, I'll give them more of that, right? So I just happened to stumble upon that, and so I've done well, but then that only takes you so far. Yeah. you got to kind of know how it works. So it's like, okay, I've, I've reached this level of notoriety or whatever you want to call it. How do I sort of uh, advance it past that? And if you know how to look at the insights and you know how to target <clears throat> target people and that sort of thing, then you can kind of grow it beyond that, right? But if, without knowing it and you're just like, no, nah, I don't care about any of that kind of stuff. I'm just going to keep doing what I do and I'm going to yeah. just be awesome. Yeah, that's great, but it's only going to get you yeah, so far. No. That's the same in real estate too, right? I mean, like, whatever you're doing, like, I'd say even in marketing, like, your personality 
will automatically click with a certain number of people. Yeah. Just you being you, right? So the market's like this big. You'll you'll be attracted to like this many people, which is yeah. great. But the problem is that only takes you so far. And if you want to make more money, you've got to be able to appeal to this many people. Yeah. And how do you reach them? How do you appeal to them? So you got to know how the system works, how to tailor your message for the different platforms and like the different languages of the platforms because they are a little bit different um, and all that sort of stuff, right? And I think that's the part people get intimidated by. Yeah. It's like, it just seems like, it just seems like too much, I guess. And it can be overwhelming, yeah. but meh. I just, I'm, <laughs> you got to know how it works, but you got to kind of not stress over it either. Yeah, kinda, like, like, I don't worry at all about how, I just, I know roughly how it works and I just sure. structure around that without... Like, I don't even actually look at time online. Because I know, like, for example, my audience, they're all generally around the same time, but every other competitor of mine posting knows that too, so they're posting then, so there's sure. more competition then too. Sure. So I I find that now, I just post when I'm ready to post, and yeah. my results haven't changed that much. Yeah. I, so. I'm more consistency, so I'm like, I was, I've got to get back to it now, because since Christmas and since I got busier, I've strayed from it a bit, but... I had like Wednesdays and Fridays. So like Wednesdays was usually a noon hour was the sort of interview or sort of the real estate report yeah. kind of thing. So whatever it was, it was like the federal budget just dropped yesterday. So then the Wednesday would be like what in real estate is yeah. related into the budget, right? What are the changes to the mortgage rules? If, if I didn't have any of that, then it was just like a market update. Yeah. Like what's happening in Hamilton, what's happening in Bimbrook in general in the market kind of thing. And then Fridays was interviews. Yeah. So I do Fridays and I have like Billy on or Matthew yourself or Sarah, Sarah Kalki was one of the first ones I had on. And it was always somebody who was like in real estate so we could talk about real estate first, yeah. um, talk about their market, talk about what they're doing, all that sort of stuff, but then had something extra. Yeah. So that extra relationship, relatable part, interesting about them. Um, so Sarah like does competitive like rodeo riding. Right? Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> let's let's do that. Yeah. There's this tiny little blonde woman who rides like rodeo horses. I'm like yeah. that works for me. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. And then Jessica Hellard is out in Kingston and she she founded and runs the animal rescue yeah. out there. I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool. We'll do that. And then like with Billy, we had the geeky stuff yeah. happening, so we talked about that. But it was always that little extra part. And I think, like I said, just generally for marketing and relationship wise, that's what people connect to and that's what yeah. I find interesting. And I did have people contact me. And be like, you know, wait, I'm a Remax agent in in this area of the country, and blah blah blah. I'd love to be on your your interview show. I'm like, okay, cool. I was like, what makes you kind of like work? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the questions I asked going into the League of Real Estate Geeks is like, what makes you a geek? Yeah, like tell me, explain to me why I should think that you're a geek, right? And depending on how they answer it, it's like, yeah, you can be part of the group or no, yeah. right? And on the interview, it was the same, right? It was like, well, what makes you interesting? well, I'm the top agent in this, and I market here, and I do that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aside from real estate, though. Yeah. What makes you interesting? It's like, eh. I'm not. <laughs> it's kind of average. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. Well, I like you. You're nice. We can be friends, but yeah. can't Don't be on a show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was an interesting talk one time, and like I was talking about, it was basically the way he referred to this whole stuff as your sidecar interest. So it's like, you know, those old school motorcycles with the sidecar, and it's like, what are you bringing along with you? So if you look at the most obvious example, it'd be like Gary V in the New York Jets. Like, yes, sure. Gary V's a business guy, but everyone thinks about the New York Jets too with him. Like, what's yeah. that sidecar interest to like humanize you yeah. when you're going through? Yeah. And that's kind yeah. of the stuff I think you get more engagement with. Yeah. Like, if you're talking business, I mean, depending on the business you're in, I guess, right? But like real estate in particular, I think most people have a passing interest in it. Yeah. Right? They kind of just like, almost like the real estate porn. They like looking at the luxury homes and, yeah. and vacation properties and all that kind of stuff. Um, they have like, you know, HGTV is popular for a reason. Like they yeah. just like it. They, for whatever, just have like, the, it's become an obsession with, with <laughs> nationally pretty much. Um, so there is that sort of baseline interest in real estate, yeah. but not necessarily a specific interest in like market reports and numbers and all that yeah. stuff, unless you're actively buying or selling, right? Yeah. And then you're like, okay, well, what's happening in the market? So I think the thing that engages people more, and at one point the joke was, you know, was cat videos, right? Mm -hmm. they, you know, I'll, I'll post a million things about real estate, but the cat video everybody loves, yeah. right? And so you got to find that other thing. 
if you're looking to run this, and you do have to be somewhat intentional about it, right? If you're just stumbling upon it, you know, good for you. But yeah. like you said, that only takes you so far. So if you want to engage with people, then it's like, well, you don't really have to look much further than what you like, yeah. right? Whether you're a motor, part of a motorcycle club, uh, you're like, you like basketball, whatever and stuff. So I started doing like the pop culture report, mm -hmm. which was like, I don't know, it's like Tuesday nights or whatever. And I had a ton of people tuning in and I got more engagement in the videos, like people actually asking questions and commenting and stuff than I would in a real estate video. Like people just kind of passively listen but in the in the pop culture one, I'm talking about upcoming movies and TV shows and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And people are like, oh my God, this is awesome. Thanks for letting me know. Like, I love the fact that you know so much about this stuff. And it's like all the background, the stuff we talk about in Lord, yeah. the stuff happening at the studios and who's getting fired and scripts yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of a condensed version of that. Um, and that's the things that people kind of were like, the fun stuff that people were kind of really more interested in. And then they're like, they just feel more friendly with you. Um, so then when I actually do see them in person, it's, they just know you already. Yeah, it's right? something to talk about. Like they know how to have that conversation yeah. too. They're already really relaxed. Um, it's not like you're showing up completely out of the blue. Like yeah. I said, they're pretty chilled out and they, this, they've heard you talk on like, I don't know how many different videos yeah. about whatever. And they commented. So like you've already had a conversation. Um, so when you show up in person, it's just like, we're just talking like this, right? Yeah. And if, if we are talking business, it's like, I don't really need to explain who I am, what I do. No. They know, right? And pretty much they know the marketing too, because it's all out there. Mm -hmm. um, I always say like, if your marketing is a secret, you've got like horrible marketing. Because yeah. <laughs> if it's any good, I should have seen it by now, right? Yeah. So like, like these old school kind of people who kind of keep it all secret and hide it yeah. away. It's just like, dude, like, okay, sure. Well, it's like, even like when I talk to someone, I'm like, and if I have to think for so long about like, wait, where's their market again? Yeah. Like, that's wrong. I know you, you like, even though it's like the geek agent, I also know it's Hamilton. Like, there's yeah. no question geek agent Hamilton. Yeah. But there's a lot of people like, I know who they are. I know what they do. No clue their market is. Yeah. And I, I give Paul Hannon credit for that one. Uh, the godfather of like the Remax <laughs> yeah. conventions. Um, early on, like the whole geeky agent thing, or real estate geek thing really took off at the first R4 that I went to. Mm -hmm. um, so like mutual friends of ours, like General Brian, who's pre max mm -hmm. out in uh, Oakville, Lake Burlington Way, um, nominated me to be like the artist for out R4, yeah. or at least one of them, um, to our uh, to Corey Joe, who's no longer there in corporate head office, uh, to kind of show up at the convention. I've talked about this online before and I have videos about it, um, to just draw comics about or these little one panel snapshots about what happened at the, at the session. Yeah. What were the, what were the takeaway points kind of thing? So yeah. people have done it at Inman conferences before and that's where they got the idea from. Um, and I just, I nominated, well, Jed nominated me and I talked to Corey Joe and we said, all right. And I just kind of took over, took it over. And I said, no, let's, let's make it a story. Yeah. Right. And it was just like, I don't want to just show up and be like this cheesy, like, Here's the five takeaway points from this session. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was like, oh, let's screw that. Let's just do this. Let's do this comic book style and we'll just like tell the story of like starting today yeah. about me just being excited to go, number one. <laughs> uh, first time in Vegas, first time, you know, going to a Remax, like an R4 convention, all that stuff. And uh, just created the real estate geek, the little character. Yeah. I was like, oh, we'll kind of make him look like me and <laughs> give him a beard and whatever and he can talk for me. Um, and then it morphed into the geeky agent eventually. But uh, we started doing all these comics, started including all these people. And Paul uh, said to me, when we're in Vegas, he goes, just make sure you, you always put Hamilton. Yeah. Like whatever you do, like in the in the tagline, just he saw them. He's like, you know what? You should just put, make sure you put Hamilton so people know yeah. where you're from. One of the cleverest things I ever saw on Facebook is him. Mm -hmm. And the interesting side is that he's not a techie guy. No. Nope. But it still remains one of the most clever things is he put on Facebook his maiden name mm. as Mississauga. Right. So it doesn't show up. Like, it still just shows Paul Hannon. Right. But if you ever type the name Mississauga, yeah. it pulls up like you're going to tag him. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, you might meet... And it, I'm just like, that's brilliant. Because, like, if you type the word Mississauga, Paul Hannon just shows up on Facebook. Yeah. I'm like, that's genius. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Yeah. No, and I've seen a few other people do it since then. 
Um, but he and he's the guy. Like he's the guy yeah. about networking and marketing. Yeah. He's been doing it forever. Yeah. Uh, and then within the last few years, especially, he's really taken off doing it really well. Yeah, well, he's like the goat of agent to agent referrals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, he's the guy. They told me he's the godfather yeah. all the time. Um, but yeah, that's where I learned that from. So basically, from that point forward, um, every day uh, or every panel that I put out, every yeah. uh, interview that I do, every video that I put out. It always starts off like, hey, I'm Tony the Geeky Agent from Hamilton, yeah. specifically Bimbrook here in the southeast yeah. corner of <laughs> Hamilton, blah, blah, blah. And then we just ro roll into it kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it, it I get, it's incredible because, I mean, like I said, I do reasonably well. Um, I'm probably average to above average agent in my market right now and growing every year. But yeah, I get my name mentioned way more often and before other agents who've been working this market for like 10, 15, 20 years, yeah. right? And my name is the one that's popping up when people are on the referral group saying, I need a, yeah, a buying agent sure. or selling agent for Hamilton kind of thing. And it's basically that, it's the consistency. It's just, again, it's being intentional. Like you said, you can, things happen by accident and that's great. Um, in one of the groups that I'm in, one of the guys mentioned that, you know, we were sort of figuring out funnels and flywheels and stuff about yeah. where the business comes from and that. And he put down that like this pizza parlor that he goes to and it shows up multiple times and I'm like, well, what are you doing with the pizza parlor? He's like, well, I just show up there and I get, you know, deals because I meet people and this and that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like the accidental stuff is great. I'm happy for you. But is it something that you can actually, uh, and you should keep doing it, but is it actually something that you can, you have control over? That yeah. you can like, like Facebook ads or whatever it is that you can ramp up when you want more business yeah. or scale back when you want less business, right? That's the kind of things that you need to sort of, like I said, be more intentional about. And that's when, when I'm looking at Facebook, I'm just like, okay, how did the early YouTube guys uh, get popular? Mm -hmm. And they were horrible. If you go back like beginning of YouTube, like 12 years ago, 13 yeah. years ago, the videos were absolutely garbage. Like these one megapixel cameras that was streaming yeah. and it's just, the content was garbage. It was just horrible. They were just the ones doing it. <laughs> they were the ones doing it and they were doing it like every Wednesday or every morning for 10 minutes or they had a schedule like a TV show, like a TV channel. It was like you knew that every Wednesday at six o'clock, the new video from whoever was gonna drop yeah. and you, people were there and they got these huge followings. And I just got my like first like, like video, like follower, <laughs> this approach me out of the blue at, at the Nathan Dart conference. Yeah. And at the end, uh, this one other agent from a different brokerage came up to me and was like, oh, I just, I didn't want to leave without <laughs> saying like, I really love your videos and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, <laughs> who are you? Okay, that's, I'll take that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, but it was like, yeah. all right, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm, and I don't have millions of views. Hey. I have. <laughs> Okay, you do you want to come sit with us? <laughs> yeah, we have dogs and kids. We're yeah, awesome. this is a multifaceted episode, honey. You can come sit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have dad saying yes and mom saying no. So. <laughs> classic, my, classic parenting. <laughs> ah, that's great. So we're about to meet same. my daughter Hannah. Yeah, I was gonna say it's hi. Great when you're on the same page. Hello. Hi, can you say hi to Tony, Chip? Can you say hi to Tony? <gasps> oh, thinking you're about be shy. It. Say hi, Tony. Now likes me. No thumb, remember? If you put your thumb in, you go to bed. Uh oh. <gasps> Don't want to do that. Yeah. Do you want to see what's in the bag? There's a bunny. No. There's a bunny for you. Do you want to see the bunny? Go look in the bag over there. You want to go look in the bag? There's a present for you. Mm -hmm. You want to see a present? Just thinking about it. Yeah. Look, over there. Go, go see the present. You can walk around that way if you want. <laughs> you gotta go. Look, right there. Go get it. <laughs> I don't know. What geeky stuff are you looking at forward to other than Wheel of Time?
<laughs> yes, definitely. Now, just tying it back to real estate, like how many of your clients are geeky? Like, does that bring in clients on that side, or is that more on like the agent side of it? Um, I think they all are to a certain extent. Um, I don't think they're. I haven't done any specific targeted marketing for geeky people, no. right? Like, so I haven't like refined any of my targeting to be people who are interested in like Marvel or DC or movies or anything like that. I think I want to going forward. I've been doing like community building. Yeah. So I've got like Bimbrook, my little community there. And then I've got a wider like realtor community, that kind of thing. Um, and so I've been working on those kind of things. And I think I want to move forward and do more. Like I did a couple of times we were at uh, the Hamilton Comic Convention. Yeah. So I had a booth there, like a photo booth there. And that was more just me being the geeky agent at the comic book convention in yeah. Hamilton, right? Um, but I didn't do any targeted on that. Now, once I have clients and we start talking about all yeah. this stuff, then they're, they're into it. Like, they know all this stuff, yeah. right? So, I met, and it's not even age-specific because I was kind of blown away because uh, I went and I was filling, actually filling in for somebody else and I took this uh, family to, s to do a walkthrough in a house that they were closing on in a week out in Niagara Falls way, well under Niagara Falls, I forget where it was. And so I go up there and it's the whole family and they got their, the grandmothers there and the family and the kids are there or whatever. And I had my geeky agent, uh, superhero like looking yeah. cards. Um, so I'd met this family once before, but not the grandmother. And then I'm walking out and we're leaving. And I think, I think she asked me for a card or I just handed her one or whatever. So I gave her one of those. And I said, oh, the, and I always say the same thing. I was like, oh, this is my fun one. I've got serious ones if you want, but nobody really likes them. So I gave yeah. you this one. And she got it. And she started looking at it. And she's like, immediately didn't even say anything else. She just immediately looked at me and said, Marvel or DC? <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. And this lady was like pushing 70. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I get it. And it's pretty <laughs> cool. But uh, so on that, on that level, it's helped me connect with people that way. And at my, you know, my local comic shop and that kind of thing. But I want to do more events, like, I'm trying to build an event around Avengers Endgame. Yeah. So I want to do, like, a client appreciation type event where I'm hoping, it's going to be long, that's the only problem, is that I was thinking of taking him to my office, which is next to the movie theater, and actually watching Infinity War, or at least having it on, yeah. and having, like, a client event, and then going to Endgame. But Endgame's, like, three hours long. Yeah, it's gonna and be, it's like, eesh, that's that's a long haul for yeah. anybody. Especially if you uh, have kids there. Yeah, that's why I was saying it would be, it'd have to be an adults only event just because of that. It'll be because it's going to be like, like six seven hours long yeah. if you do the whole thing, and and it, there's going to have to be alcohol involved at yeah. some point. They're going to have to be relaxed because it's a long yeah. haul. <laughs> I know. Uh, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, but yeah, I'd like to do more. Um, I've got some other ideas. We'll chat, but I'd like. I want to do, I like the Keller Williams expansion model for teams. Yeah. Um, I don't think anybody at Remax kind of does that right now. Um, so I kind of want to implement something like that with the geeky agents uh, and sort of make it a more branded, branded, but sort of cross country kind of thing. And then do uh, appreciation events that are like coordinated up all at the same time. Yeah. So then you're using media to go live and go to different locations and do different mm -hmm. things. Uh, so I really want to push that, especially with you know the, the greater focus supposedly on things like Facebook and Instagram with video, uh, like the stories aspect of it and stuff, no. just to really ramp up that side of it, um, and it's just to push the brand that that much farther as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's like I said, it's not something I don't think that's attracted people to me necessarily, but it helps make that connection once they're there. Yeah. Right conversion piece more than generation. Yeah, absolutely. And again, mainly it's because I just really haven't. Um, I think I should probably, maybe I'll get you guys to run an ad. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I'll throw some money at it and see yeah. what happens. I'll run an yeah, ad and be right. like, yeah, yeah I'm the, I know uh, the one guy that was part of our group for a while, who I don't think is anymore, uh, was like the realtor to the fandom community. Yeah. Uh, I like that tagline. I'm like, I wouldn't steal a tagline, but um, that type of marketing in my market area yeah. just to see who we could if anybody pick up Cause i'll do a lot of stuff like you guys do a lot of stuff for me but i'll do a lot of on my own just kind of playing and i've been trying to do just more like again what i was doing with the conventions going to yeah. markets where people were coming i've been target marketing those areas as well just to try and generate business because i know that there's people from those areas coming to my my way yeah. right and i've picked up 
a few leads that way to people that were floating around looking for homes in Hamilton in like other markets that were like you know probably four to five hours away from where I am yeah. uh, so I'm not really interfering with anybody else's business I usually do yeah. um, but I'm still looking for clients right so yeah. yeah I'm up for anything I'll try anything once <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what if it I think you kind of got to go in with the open attitude otherwise uh, you're missing out on a lot uh, like I said it's, it's such a yeah. It, I don't think there's one market anymore. Like we're, we're it's so many micro markets, yeah. so many niches everywhere. People have their interests, um, and they're just getting more and more fragmented and stuff. So you really gotta shotgun it to a certain extent to see who you can who you can bring in, right? Yeah. Hmm. So if people want to learn more about you, where how can they reach you? I am the Geeky Agent. So anywhere you go, thegeekyagent.com. Uh, anywhere on social media, it's just at the Geeky Agent. And uh, yeah, email me, Tony at the Geeky Agent.com, or said on the website, all my social channels and contact stuff is there. Uh, like I said, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Pinterest, PlayStation Network. I'm all at the Geeky Agent. So if you nice want to visible. play, yeah, it's everywhere. It's all the same everywhere. If you're playing Rainbow Six and you see the geeky agent run by and shoot you, it's probably not me. It's probably my son. <laughs> but that's yeah. my account. Uh, so, yeah, reach out and grab me anywhere you want. Sweet. So, thanks for coming on. Appreciate Absolutely. it a lot. And stay tuned for the next episode of I Don't Know Who the Guest is Going to Be, but I'm sure it'll be someone great. So, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.